Here we go. Now this one, we should have a movie. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, that's a great place to uh, to do a recap. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Pentatonic Parallel, Part 19, Nuances. In today's episode, we set out to work with the composition that we had completed in the last stream, which was this melody and cadence elaboration, which sounds like this. Like that. So we had a nice arpeggio part, we have a nice melody part, and a very slow, and they play off against each other. So uh, today we were exploring adding dynamics, adding passing notes. It turned out we already had passing notes. We didn't quite realize it. We thought about doing something to make the phrases linger, but what we actually ended up doing was adding tim timbre for the low moving part. And we thought we were going to use a cello, but we actually used a contrabass. So the results are that we have used the contrabass, what we call a backbone. So we've added a whole new part down here. Very low, very low. A polysynth to double the melody. Uh, we did go ahead and adjust some of the dynamics. You can see that in the refrain, as we can get down to the refrain, we have so many parts now. Uh, right here. This is a part where it feels like it's ringing a bell just before it starts over. And um, we left the original piano part in there at a uh, forte. So the piano for, uh, melody is forte. The piano patch polysynth is forte. And then the contrabass backbone is forte. So they just balance each other out dynamically. And then the, the arpeggio, we've kicked it back up to a forte just to hold its own in the middle of all that. And uh, the cadences are still hey, back here, tiny little pianissimo. They still add a little bit of uh, character to the, how it sounds, so we like it. Uh, we did f realize we had been using passing notes. Every one of these notes in the middle here is a passing note, for example. So we, we were using passing notes. We then did some more melody elaborations. And what we did is we went through and we looked at that composition, what we're now calling nuances, and realized all of those notes are used, but we never used any of these notes in the melody. They are used in the cadences, because they are. So we, we played around with that, and we came up with a, a very quick three-line composition like this. So that was kind of fun. Not sure what we're going to do with it, but it was a way to um, our exercise in looking at passing notes. And that's what it says here, made more melody variations. Then we had fun because we, we knew we were going to go into um, the visualizer. So we made a wave shape here and we made a three point star here. And those are now in the visualization. So, um, I guess we're going to play that for you. And then as usual, we're going to have to have ideas for next steps, which to be honest, we haven't thought of yet. So let us go to the visualization and show you what we ended up doing here. We took the wave shape here and drove it 
um, uh, an upper wave shape being driven by the melody. And then the lower wave shape down here is being driven by the backbone. And then uh, the arpeggios are driving a three-point star here. And then we wanted a balance. So we wanted um, something on the bottom left and the bottom right. And we ended up just reusing the backbone. So, so those these blue stars are going to match this uh, this lower wave shape. The, the melody has pride of place up here. And uh, then this was just kind of like a horizontal reference line. So we're going to play this whole thing for you as a way to play the composition in contrast to the, the way we often do it, which is over here. But just to be clear, what we're listening to is this score. We have now added a patch melody line, which is the polysynth. We've left the piano playing the arpeggios and the contrabass plays that very, very low rumbling note. So here we go. So that concludes <laughs> the stream. Uh, we're really tickled with that. We, we like the, the play of the chambers and that ominous undercord and that powerful sweet resolve at the end, which is 10 times stronger, we feel like, with the undercord sub 
what do they call it? Subsonics agreeing with the resolution. So ideas for next step um, are to share this for feedback. Another thing we've been starting to think about is to review all the 27723443 compositions to date. Maybe a synopsis. Another idea might be to do a 2772 standalone. And then our, our favorite ever is to be determined. So tune in next time and see where we're going with that. Thank you for your time and attention and interest. And we look forward to seeing you in the next stream. And as always, keep on streaming.